Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Masters 25. There are obviously quite a few really, really high dollar cards in here that we are definitely hoping to get. I also did get to draft this set a little bit, so I'm hoping that I actually have a decent amount of knowledge that I can share with you guys. So we'll do the best we can with this one, uh, but definitely really, really excited to open it. Uh, of course, uh, as I hinted at, we are gonna be opening and looking at every single card as if this was a pack one, pick one scenario. So we'll try and figure out uh, what our actual pack one, pick one pick would be. Uh, and so we'll do the best we can to figure that out, but our first card here is Act of Treason. It's a sorcery for two and a red. You gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. You untap that creature, and it gains haste until the end of the turn. This is a very classic card, something we see a lot of, and it actually works very, very well in this, uh, this set because there is a black-red sort of sacrifice outlet deck. Uh, it's really, really good to be able to steal somebody's creature, maybe swing in with it, maybe not, but be able to sacrifice it in, uh, at the end of the turn or your second main phase. That way they don't get it back. So it actually acts as a removal spell in a lot of instances. It's also just really good in just aggro style decks when you're just trying to beat face as quick as possible. Removes a blocker from their side of the field and gives you an extra attacker all at the same time for just three mana. Seems pretty good. So uh, I do like this card. Not necessarily first pickable in my mind, but definitely not bad. Uh, Savannah Lions is a 2-1 vanilla creature for one white. Uh, obviously the draw here is that it is a 2-1, not just a 1-1 vanilla creature. So it's got a little bit more power than a one or than a one drop, excuse me, normally would. Uh, that being said, not all that exciting, unfortunately. Uh, it is just a 2-1, so it's going to get outpowered very, very quickly. If you don't have any early game, or if you're in just sort of a go-wide strategy, I can see maybe running this, but that's really where it's at its best, and unfortunately that doesn't uh, really, really work too well, so not a fan. Uh, Dusk Legion Zealot is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. This is very, very similar to another card, a Phyrexian uh, Rage, no, uh, some Phyrexian card that's uh, two and a black for a 2-2 that does the exact same thing. Uh, I really like cards like this. It gives you a body on the field, which is good, so you can either block with it early or actually even swing in for maybe a couple points of damage if you're lucky. Uh, but it does also replace itself, which in draft is really, really important. It's sort of a draw card on a stick, which is great. So. I do like this card. Again, not really first pickable, but so far it's definitely the card that I am most interested in, uh, just out of the few that we've gotten. Uh, Thresher Lizard is a 3-2 for two and a red. Uh, it gets plus one, plus two, as long as you have one or fewer cards in your hands. So basically this gets stronger and stronger the later in the game that it is, is the idea. Uh, I'm not a fan of this card. It's perfectly fine, I assume, to run it. It can be a 4-4 late game, which isn't bad. Uh, for a red deck especially, it's kind of the top end for a red deck. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine in that scenario, but it's really not all that exciting. It doesn't really make me want to first pick it by any means. Uh, Brainstorm is an instant for one blue, very classic card. Draw, ca draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Uh, so this card's really, really good with shuffle effects. If you don't like if if this has not made sense to you before, the, or if you've never watched Legacy before, uh, the idea is that you draw three cards, you put some bad ones or some cards that you're worried about losing on top of your deck, and then you can either shuffle them away if you if they're really bad cards, you don't want to draw them uh, with maybe a fetch land like Evolving Wilds or even actual fetch lands in Legacy, uh, or you can just kind of put them there as protection. So if you're up against like a hand destruction kind of style deck. Uh, this gives you a little bit of an extra out against those to make sure that you're not losing some of your more powerful cards. Uh, it also does just draw, draw you a card, which is good. So I do like this card quite a bit. Uh, it is not a first pick card. Uh, it's also not quite as good in limited, and the reason being it's a lot harder to get actual shuffle effects. Now, there are a number of them in this set, I'm sure. Uh, so if I do have a couple, this card becomes that much better. Uh, but in general, not a super exciting card. I do like that it's only one mana and instant speed though, so it is very, very efficient. Definitely a card that if I was in blue, I would actually be looking at, but uh, so far, not the best. Uh, Anyok Survivalist, I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a 2-1 for one and a green. It has a Megamorph cost of one and a green, so you can cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for three of any mana and then turn it up at any time for its Megamorph cost, and then you put a plus one, plus one counter on it if you do. Uh, when it's turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. 
This is a very, very, very solid two drop uh, in a green deck. It's not super exciting, I get it, but uh, it gives you utility against a lot of artifacts and enchantments. It also can flip for and actually be a 3-2 instead of just a 2-1. So I like this card. Not first pickable, but definitely very good. Uh, Prophetic Prism is an artifact for two mana of any color. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and then you can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Essentially, you can filter your mana into any color that you'd like. This is really, really good for a ramp style, or not a ramp style deck, excuse me, a multicolor deck where uh, you maybe just got unlucky in your draft and you needed to make five color, color junk. This is the perfect card for you. So I actually like this card just in general as well. It does draw a card. Uh, it also does fix your mana, which is really important. So I'm perfectly fine with it. Not a great first pick, but not bad. Uh, Dark Ritual is an instant for one black, and you add three black to your mana pool. Essentially, it's a one-turn accelerant. There are a lot of decks in Constructed, things like Storm that love stuff like this. Uh, this is the perfect card for those decks. In Draft, a little unimpressive, uh, in my opinion. It does allow for some really broken things, but you're reliant on multiple cards to get there. Uh, so not the biggest fan of this, though there are decks that probably would want it. Oops. Uh, Colossal Dreadmaw, a very funny card. It is a 6-6 six, six Trampler for 4 and 2 green. It's just a perfectly fine beater. It's not great, uh, it's, it's serviceable, but it's really not all that amazing in a Master's set, unfortunately. Though that being said, this is not a great Master's set, so uh, if you're in a green deck and you need a beater, perfectly fine. Uh, Skeletonize is 4 and a red for an instant. It deals 3 damage to target creature. When a creature dealt damage this way dies this turn, you create a 1-1 one, one black skeleton creature token with one, pay a black and regenerate this creature. I like this card quite a bit. It's a little expensive, but it is instant speed, and if you kill something with it, you get a 1-1 one, one black skeleton creature token. I like that a lot. Uh, so far, this seems to be the most exciting card in the pack in my opinion. I might be wrong on that, but we'll see what we get in the rest of the pack also. Uh, <laughs> Kong Ming Sleeping Dragon. Uh, what an interesting card. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 and 2 white, and other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So this is just an anthem effect for all of your creatures. It is a legendary creature worth noting in this set, uh, so you cannot have more than one of these out on the field at the same time. Uh, otherwise, you'll legend rule yourself and you have to get rid of one. So... This is like okay in a go wide strategy, maybe with those Savannah Lions, things like that, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but in general, not all that exciting, I don't think. So I did not have any real experience with this card in particular. Uh, it's not something I ever really went for, so not my favorite. Uh, Curiosity is an enchant creature for one blue. Uh, the enchanted creature, if it deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. Uh, this is a really powerful ability that being said, you really have to write, have the right cards to put it on. Uh, something that's unblockable, something like that, is going to love a card like this. Even if you get one or two hits off of it only, it's worth it because it's replacing itself. So I do like this more than most enchanted creatures, but I would not first pick it. I'd have to have the creatures to go with it first. So that being said, I do like it. Uh, Quicksand is a land, and you can tap it to add one generic mana to your mana pool. You can also sacrifice it and target attacking creature without flying gets minus one, minus two, excuse me, until end of turn. So this is really just to pick off lower ground creatures. Uh, very, very good against aggro decks. I would consider this more of a sideboard card just in general. Uh, I do think it's decent. There's definitely instances where I would run it. Uh, but a lot of times I feel like I would not main deck a card like this. Whoa, okay. Well, we found our pick. Uh, we pulled a Jace the Mind Sculptor. If you don't know what Jace does, he's kind of a game-winning card, just in general. So, uh, three loyalty Planeswalker for two and two blue. If you plus two, you get to Brainstorm, the card we looked at earlier. Uh, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, you Fate Seal, I mixed that up. So, Fate Seal, you look at the top card of Target Player's Library, you may put that card on either the bottom or the top, you get to decide. Uh, this is a really powerful ability, you can lock players out of the game with this. Uh, the zero ability, excuse me, is the brainstorm ability. Uh, so the exact, literally the exact same thing as brainstorm, draw three and then put two back. Uh, for minus one, you can return target creature to its owner's hand. And then for minus 12, you exile all cards from target player's library. Then that player shuffles his or her hand into his or her library. So basically their hand becomes the rest of their deck and that is it. This is definitely the card I would pick. We do, if I'm not mistaken, 
We do have a Vesuvan Shapeshifter, which is a foil rare, which is interesting. It's a zero zero. When it enters the battlefield or is turned face up, you may choose another creature on the battlefield. If you do, until the shapeshifter is turned face down, it becomes a copy of that creature and gains at the beginning of your upkeep, you may turn this creature face down. So definitely a decent card, not one that I'm unhappy to see, but uh, clearly Jace is the pick. I don't think there's really any question there. Absolutely fantastic card, definitely one that I would love to see in an actual draft, and I never did, so. Uh, but great card, definitely the card I would pick. If you happen to disagree for some reason, let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. I would absolutely love to talk with you, and hopefully you enjoyed it. But uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.